Good morning, everyone. We're going to um, start with the little um, palm cross type liturgy thingy. Um, I'm sure it's got an official name, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, so uh, the words are on the screen. Um, if everyone joined in, is it the bits in yellow? So, should we stand? So, if we all say the bits in yellow. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold, your King comes to you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass. Ride on in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God. It endures forever, and the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die and to rise again. So let us go with him in faith and love, so that, united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. So if you'd like to hold up your palm crosses. The God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let us go forth, praising Jesus our Saviour. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So, again, if you can say uh, the verses in uh, yellow. The earth. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, or who can rise up in his holy place? Lifted up their soul to a God, nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive the blessing of God, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Who is the King of Glory? Who is this King of Glory? So we're going to sing our first hymn, uh, which is Make Way.
Be seated. So our notices uh, for this week, obviously it's Holy Week, so uh, it's a bit busy. Uh, so the uh, services are here, uh, are there up on the screen. Uh, Monday, uh, tomorrow, uh, 7 o'clock, got Stations Across service led by uh, David Woodward. Um, then uh, we've got the Family Good Friday service at 2 o'clock. And before that there's the Easter Egg Hunt. Uh, from 10 till 2. Uh, if anyone's got any uh, eggs I'd like to donate for that, uh, then please do. Um, they, they can bring them along. Any points, Alan? Yeah, you can Yeah, brilliant. Uh, then on Easter Day, so next Sunday, uh, we've got a half five uh, Easter sunrise service, uh, which will be followed by breakfast. So. Um, you don't have to book, but if you can let us know uh, if you are thinking of coming, uh, we can make sure there's some uh, food, uh, but you can just turn up uh, if you want, that's fine. And then, yes, it'll be a community service. Yeah. Um, and then uh, normal 9.15 Easter communion uh, later on. Uh, there's the also uh, Monday Thursday services at Broughton this year, so 7 o'clock on Thursday for uh, the Monday Thursday service, uh, which will also be a communion. Um, what was your other notice? Oh yes, uh, PCC uh, notice, we arranged a safeguarding training, um, I can't remember what date it was, 14th of something was it? Yeah. Uh, so whenever that was, um, that's a day to do uh, all the um, safeguarding modules that you need to do. So you don't have to do any before that date. We, we can get together and do them all together. Um, and then Margaret. It's a, tradi a tradition here that we have Easter lilies to decorate the church on Easter Sunday. Leslie normally organises this, but she's in Western Australia recovering from 26 hours on an aeroplane. So uh, Margaret has kindly offered to do the arrangements, and if any of you would like to contribute toward the cost of the lilies, I'll be standing at the, church, at the back of the church after the service to receive your donations. And if you give enough, Margaret will be in Australia next year as well. <laughs> Are there any other notices? No? So let's come to God in confession. As the crowds welcome Jesus into Jerusalem, so we welcome him into our midst. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We sing, we wave our branches, we shout Hosanna. Then we turn away to go back to our old ways, our old lives, our old sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We shout Hosanna as Jesus approaches, but we do not want him to come too close, not close enough to really see us. Christ, have mercy. We would rather take up our palms for the King of Glory than take up our cross for the Servant King. Lord, have mercy. The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. See, your Saviour comes. Your sin has been paid for. You will be called the Holy People, the redeemed of the Lord. People of God, see, your Saviour comes. Christ has come to save us. Hosanna in the highest. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, 
now and forever. Amen. So let's stand for our next hymn, You Are the King of Glory. The reading is taken from Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2, and then 19 to the end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in this festal procession, up to the, to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. is taken from Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 11. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village ahead, sorry, go to the village there ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him, the master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. 
This happened in order to make what the prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion. Look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son, God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the crowds answered. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So today, uh, as you've probably gathered, is Palm Sunday. Um, although if you were uh, paying attention to that Gospel reading, we'll know that in uh, Matthew's Gospel, uh, we're just told that they were chopped down branches. Uh, it doesn't tell us what trees they came from. Uh, so perhaps uh, in honour of Matthew's Gospel, we should call it uh, Branch Sunday uh, today instead of Palm Sunday. And uh, if you remember from last year, when we were looking at Luke's account of the Gospel, uh, Luke doesn't mention any branches at all. Uh, so perhaps uh, when it comes around to the year of Luke, we should call it No Trees Were Destroyed in the Making of This Triumphal Entry Sunday. But as we uh, hear again that story, uh, whatever the details are uh, in the particular Gospels, uh, one of the things that comes through all of them as we imagine that scene of Jesus coming into Jerusalem and the people cheering is those words uh, that the crowds were saying, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And so perhaps today uh, should also, or could also be called, Hosanna Sunday. And Hosanna is one of those words that we often use in church, we often uh, sing it as we, we have just done. And it's often a word that we sort of know what it means, uh, but we don't uh, perhaps always uh, think exactly. And if someone asked us what it meant, uh, we might not be able to say Hosanna is one of those uh, few words that often in the New Testament is not translated. It's one that comes uh, to us from the original languages. Uh, other words uh, like that include hallelujah and amen. So whereas most times uh, when the translators find a Greek or a Hebrew word, uh, they give us the English equivalent. For some words like uh, hallelujah and amen, and here, Hosanna, uh, they don't do that. They just give us the kind of English spelling of uh, that uh, Greek or Hebrew word. So what uh, does Hosanna really mean? Well, Hosanna itself is just a Greek spelling of a Hebrew word. It's one that the New Testament writers uh, didn't even translate from, uh, from the Hebrew. They just... Uh, sounded it out in Greek letters and it's a word that we find in uh, our first reading is Psalm 118 although again in there it was actually translated in Psalm uh, 118 it says Hosanna Lord Hosanna uh, Lord send us now success in Psalm 118 as we heard it translated uh, it means please save us. Hosanna is a cry for help, a cry for salvation. 
But as we read the rest of Psalm 118, uh, that cry for help isn't the only sentiment in that psalm. The rest of the psalm is a psalm of thanksgiving, thanking God for bringing that help. Great God is the Lord, he has shined upon us. I will give you thanks for you answered me and have become my salvation. So Psalm 118 has this word Hosanna in it, which means uh, save us. But it's also in the context of celebrating that God has saved us, that God has brought help. And so that gives this word Hosanna that double meaning. It is a cry for help and it's also a cry of thanksgiving and praise for that help being given. And so as the crowd use this word as Jesus comes into Jerusalem, they're using it in both these ways. They're using it as a cry for help. Save us, they are saying to Jesus as he comes in. And probably uppermost in their minds was asking Jesus to save them from the Roman occupation. That would be the thing that they most concentrated on uh, in terms of uh, what they needed salvation for, to get rid of the Romans, to get rid of the whole uh, corrupt system that the Romans had brought in. They were welcoming Jesus. Uh, they were asking him, pleading with him to save them. But then within that, uh, they say, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus uh, they are not just asking for help, but they're also proclaiming that he is the one who is going to save them. And he, they're giving him praise for that and giving God uh, praise for sending a saviour. Jesus is that Messiah who is going to save them. He is the son of David. He is the one that was promised uh, the king from David's line. That's what the donkey the palm branches and the cloaks all point to. This is a royal procession. This is a king coming into his capital city, coming uh, to take control. This is the promised king who comes to save. That's what the crowds were so excited about. That's what made them uh, make this extraordinary gesture uh, of waving the palm branches uh, and laying cloaks on the ground. The crowds knew what they were doing. They knew the significance of Jesus coming. They knew that they were proclaiming him as the king, as uh, the promised Messiah. And Jesus himself knew what he was doing. Jesus was very deliberate to orchestrate this, uh, to give that message that he was the Messiah, that he is the king that is coming. He was very happy for the crowds to shout uh, these things uh, as he arrived. He was very happy for all those uh, connotations of those words to be uh, in their minds. Jesus was happy for them to do what they did. He was in some ways creating his own coronation. But although the crowds were right to proclaim Jesus as the king, the promised Messiah who was coming to save them, they should have realized that Jesus was not the king or the Messiah that they thought he was going to be. Matthew highlights that with that quote that he gives us from the prophet Zechariah. Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey. Jesus wasn't coming uh, in the way that they expected him but he was coming in humility he was not coming in power he was coming to serve Jesus was coming for his coronation but as we uh, know in a few days this crown will be a crown of thorns not a crown of gold and his throne would be the cross Jesus was coming as king, but as a different kind of king from the one that they were expecting. 
And because Jesus was not the king that they wanted, some of those crowds who were shouting Hosanna would in a few days be shouting crucify. But because Jesus wasn't the king that they wanted, he was able to be an even greater king. And that shout of Hosanna, that cry of save us, and that cry of praise could be a cry not just for them, but also for all those who believe in Jesus throughout the ages. It is a cry that we today can say. Jesus is not a military saviour defeating that political evil of Rome, but he is a sacrificial saviour defeating the spiritual evil of sin and death. So for us, Hosanna is both a cry for help and a cry of praise and thanksgiving. It's a cry for help because we need forgiveness of our sins and we cannot save ourselves. But it's also a cry of thanksgiving and praise because by Jesus' death, by his enthronement on the cross and his crowning with a crown of thorns, we can be forgiven as we come to him in repentance. Jesus brought a spiritual salvation when the crowds wanted a political salvation. But that doesn't mean that Jesus is uninterested in people's lives. We know uh, from the rest of the Gospel accounts how concerned Jesus was about people and their welfare. He healed people of all sorts of diseases. He raised the dead. He spoke out against injustice and he told people to look after those who were most vulnerable. So we should be confident that Jesus cares about all of our lives and so we should pray to him for all of our circumstances, all those areas of our lives that we need salvation and help. But as we come to Jesus uh, to ask him for that help, we should be not like the crowds who were disappointed because Jesus wasn't the saviour they wanted. In the same way, we shouldn't be disappointed if Jesus answers our prayers in a way that we don't expect. Unlike the crowds, we shouldn't turn our back on Jesus because uh, he doesn't do things the way we want him to. So we might call today Hosanna Sunday, but every Sunday, and in fact every day, should be one filled with that cry of Hosanna, those prayers asking God to save and forgive us and those prayers rejoicing that he has already saved us through Jesus and his death on the cross. Let's stand and say together the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let's sing uh, our next song, Hosanna.
Much visited. So we come to Jesus, Saviour of the world. We'll say this together. Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your King. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, save the King. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, make your ways known upon earth. Give your people the blessing of peace. Make our hearts clean, O God. New Almighty God, as we approach Holy Week here in the game, in its entirety, the story of Christ's Passion. May it help us to truly understand the sacrifice he made for us as we reflect on some aspect of his passion. Lord, in your mercy. We think of Christ, the servant, in the words of St. Ignatius. Holy God, teach us to be generous. Teach us to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not ask for reward, save that of knowing that we do your will. Lord, in your mercy. We think of Christ's prayer whilst his disciples sleep. Gracious God, we recognise that sometimes we put off prayer and thanksgiving as we give way to our human frailties. We thank him for those who pray and intercede on our behalf, both in heaven and here on earth, especially for our priests and chaplains and all members of religious orders who live a pray prayerful life of poverty, celibacy and obedience. Lord, in your mercy. We think of Christ betrayed with a kiss and with denials. Almighty God, please help us never to abandon someone in their time of greatest need. Help us to forgive those who have wounded and abandoned us in times of crisis. Cleanse our hearts from bitterness and resentment so that we can be more like Jesus, who was abandoned and betrayed by those closest to him. Lord, in your mercy. We think of Christ falsely tried. Merciful God, we pray today for those facing the mockery of a trial, knowing that there is no justice for them and that their sentence might lead to a long term of imprisonment or even death. We remember too those who are languishing in jails that are overcrowded or in human conditions and those who await their fate on death row. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of Christ tortured and violently executed. Everlasting God, your son was tortured, beaten and humiliated, 
and sentenced to an agonizing death, though he had no wrong. We pray for all prisoners throughout the world and ask you to be with them in the darkness of their prison cell, in the loneliness of separation from those they love, and in their fear that they face torture, execution, or death. Lord, in your mercy, hear all prayer. We think of Christ's compassion despite the way he received none himself. Loving God, we pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing as we name before you those who are in need, the sick and the sorrowful, those who have recently died and those who are bereaved by their passing. Dear God, we pray for all the sick in the village and also those who have been bereaved. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, send us out into Holy Week, commencing all whom we meet, for whom Christ suffered, to your mercy and protection. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and to love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. Let's say together, Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, everlasting life. Amen. So trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So, litany as we go into Holy Week. Today we have cheered you as the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Forgive us tomorrow when we corrupt the way you show us. Today we have seen you on the donkey and praised your humility. Forgive us on Tuesday when we are arrogant and hypocritical. Today we have welcomed you in the chaos and the noise. Forgive us on Wednesday when we forget to spend time with you in stillness and quiet. Today we have run to greet you and proclaimed our loyalty. Forgive us on Thursday when we run away from you and betray you. Today we have called out to you loudly by name and hailed you as our King. Forgive us on Friday when we pretend that we've never met you and say we have no King but Caesar. Today we've expressed our unsuppressed hopefulness in the future you have in store for us. Forgive us on Saturday, when we believe all is lost. Today we have expressed... Oh no, don't know. Today we have been boldly certain of the earthly ways you will redeem us. Restore us on Sunday, when we are startled and awed by your word. So as you go into this most holy of weeks, 
the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus sends us out in his name and with his power. Blessed are you as you go in the name of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, Lily and Angela have been uh, busy uh, at work, uh, not just uh, learning about Palm Sunday, but also uh, creating things to help us for our final uh, hymn. So I think they've got some palm branches, leaves, things, and also uh, some instruments as well. What have you got there, Lily? A donkey. You've got the donkey. Are you going to be the donkey? Yeah. What's and what's in your hands? You got so you got the mask, and you got some cups to make the sound. You want to come and yeah. make the sound here by the. Sound do, you can hear it. do it by the microphone so they can hear. Oh, okay. Tap them on there. Tap them on here, Lily. That was your idea. There we go. Lily's idea. Fantastic. Well done. Lily, Very what clever. Okay, and uh, what? This one made out of um, raisins. Raisins? Been You've been <laughs> eating the raisins as well, good. Yeah. Good and healthy. This is um, made out of rice. You've not been eating that, have you? No, she hasn't eaten the rice. Good. And this is made out of pasta. Yeah, pasta ones. Brilliant. And then what are these? Um, these are palm leaves. Some palm leaves as well. Brilliant. Uh, should we go and get some other instruments? And okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go on, yeah. So, do you want to give these out, Lily? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, who'll be the donkey? I don't know. Who, who, who wants to be the donkey? There we go. Sheila will. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Sheila's the one who brings animals into the church, yeah, yeah. so you can be. <laughs> who wants to wave the palm leaves? Who wants palm Okay. Palm Who else wants one? There you go, right at the back then. Good. And we've got these three shakers in. Who wants to have the bunny instrument? Take all three. Who wants to have the bunny instrument? We've got plenty of instruments, so don't worry. Right. We still got. Yeah. <laughs> right. So let's uh, stand and sing our final hymn, Hosanna in the highest. 